with other countries now steaming past America, what is the number one thing you want to see whoever wins the next election do about this? I, I think there's going to be a broad push to making classrooms more human. And when you have 42 people or 30 people, even 20 people in a room, and it's all about a lecture, even, even no matter how good you get that ratio down, it's still a passive experience. You're, you know, it's, it's what we all went through. You're, you're looking at a clock waiting for, for the period to end. And, and so what we're talking about is technology not to replace what's happening in a classroom, but to make the classroom better. If lectures can happen at a student's own pace, if a lot of the problem solving can happen, can we use the class time for interaction between the peers, interaction between the, between the teachers? So even if you have the unfortunate situation of 42 students, at least let them interact with each other. Let them, let them teach each other. Let them have more opportunities to actually interact with the teacher. But it's the, it's the, the right move forward for kids to be doing as much work at home as they do at school and doing it on computers, which is their natural habitat anyway? No. I, you know, I think actually one of the big problems, and I talk a lot about this, is uh, we have this culture of homework that, that creates this illusion of rigor. Oh, well, no, we're not good enough. The, the Estonians are beating us at factoring polynomials. More homework. <laughs> and all the studies actually point to, well, the, the single biggest determinants of student success are dinner with their parents and sleeping. And homework, if it's too much of it, uh, directly goes against both of those things. And so, and we've been working with a lot of schools, what we're seeing is if, if you actually allow more engagement in the classroom, you allow students to learn at their own pace, they actually learn much, much more